It's a different story though when you look at Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega wrestled a nine-year-old girl, an inflatable doll, and Marco stunts. What? <laughs> Number six, he sells. This is gonna be the dumbest shit I've ever heard. He always sells every move. Kenny Omega, on the other hand, does not sell too well. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a bunch of clips of Kenny Omega not really selling moves from New Japan to make my point because the more you think about it, the more this looks extremely fake. Oh, this motherfucker about to get copyright strike. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestle Kingdom? Wait. And New Japan? He about to get copyright strike, bro. Somebody send this man some help. New Japan, it just looks. Plana, my DMs are open if you need help getting those copyright strikes moved, bro. Plana Productions. I swear, I feel like these days there's not one single waking moment I can't go on pro wrestling Twitter without hearing about this guy or his takes on YouTube. Plana Productions is a fairly big YouTuber with about 275,000 subscribers and normally does wrestling videos regarding his hot takes, you know, top 10 videos, all that kind of stuff. I don't really like to say that I'm a fan of his. I watch his videos here and there, and normally it's because people are talking about it. But outside of that, I don't really watch his videos. He comes across to me as a guy who thinks his shit doesn't stink, and I don't really like that energy, to be honest. But yesterday, he dropped a video that had the wrestling community up in flames, and that is why Randy Orton is better than Kenny Omega. Now, I have my own preconceived notion going into this video, but I'm going to go into it with an open mind and just give my authentic reactions to his takes but without further ado let's hop into the video a few days ago jim ross made a bold claim stating that randy orton is currently the best wrestler in the world right now and this of course hurt the fragile egos of the aew roster and automatically this is what i hate about his videos and a lot of the wrestling fan videos is that they will target one section of the wrestling community and just shame them for having an opinion, which I think is so fucking like conceited, especially because I feel like everyone should have their own objective, subjective mindset going into any match or anything. And of course, you know, you can make a joke here and there about, oh, well, this community does this and that. But like when you put people down just for believing that Kenny Omega is a better wrestler, that's when I'm just like, yeah, I don't like that energy. All this drama has inspired me to make a video on it. And I'm going to tell you 10 reasons why Randy Orton is oh, indeed clearly better than Kenny Omega and why it's not even close. All right, so he's going to give me 10 reasons why Randy Orton is better than Kenny Omega. Now, I can assure you, because a lot of wrestling fans do this, he's going to give some blank statements, but then not really going to detail as to why. He's going to say the, the who and the what and the where, maybe the how, but he's not going to give us the why. That's my assumption in these 10 reasons, but let's see. Number one, a better finisher. One of the most important things about a professional wrestler is their finishing move. It is critical to create a legendary finisher that can end a match and leave a a lasting impression. As you can see, these wrestlers are heavily remembered for their important finishers, and Randy Orton's RKO is obviously the much better finisher when it's compared to the one-winged angel. Randy Orton's ability to hit it out of nowhere is truly spectacular. It's a devastating maneuver and is arguably the greatest finisher of all time. Okay, so this is blatantly his opinion this is not a fact or objective whatsoever this is his opinion of thinking that randy orton's rko is better than kenny omega and listen if you think the rko is better than one winged angel that is completely fine however in what sense is the rko better than one winged angel okay the garbage truck is here so if you hear some beeping in the background that's what it is yes i will give him this the rko is a better setup move it looks a lot more fluid anybody can hit it like it doesn't take a wrestler or wrestling fan to hit the move literally anybody can hit the rko on anybody and have the same effect and it'll look cool and yes it at one point was a very trendy thing in like 2016 2017 everybody's like rk out of nowhere i'll give him that but the one-winged angel not only looks cooler looks more painful but it also has a way 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 extremely lower kickout rate there's only been one person in history that has ever kicked out of one winged angel i could name probably like 18 different people who've kicked out of the rko it's it's like how are you exactly stating that the rko is better than the one winged angel because a lot of ways i see it the one winged angel looks 
better than the RKO. That's how I see it at least. That's a very subjective thing, but what do you guys think? Everyone knows what an RKO is and nobody really cares or knows what a one winged angel is. That is the dumbest shit I ever heard. People don't care or don't know what the one winged angel is. So this is where it gets really stupid because now he's trying to justify that nobody knows what the one winged angel is as if people don't watch AEW, as if people don't watch New Japan, as if people never heard of Kit. Like if you've heard or seen a match of Kenny Omega, you have likely seen him perform the one winged angel. Is Kenny Omega a more well-known name than Randy Orton? No, but to compare what finisher is better as opposed to who knows who more that is like the most straw man argument i've heard so far and we're only like one minute in so dumb number two the better wrestler randy orton doesn't just have a better finisher than kenny omega but i'm gonna go ahead and say that he's the better overall wrestler but randy orton's in-ring psychology is off the charts the closer you pay attention, the more you realize that this man just understands professional wrestling on a totally different level than most people. The biggest difference between Orton and Omega's wrestling is the fact that Randy Orton's wrestling makes sense. Every time he does a wrestling move, it looks real and it's done for a reason. As much as people hate his headlocks, he does it because that is what people actually do in MMA fights. Once again, another dumb take. Because now you're saying that Randy Orton is a better wrestler because his moves look more real. Like, Kenny Omega. I can name you versus Kazuchika Okada, versus Tetsuya Naito, versus Kota Ibushi, versus fucking, you could go to AEW if you want to. Versus Heyman Page, versus the Young Bucks, versus Sammy Guevara, versus Chris Jericho. Ver like, I can name you a bunch of Kenny Omega matches that are great off the top of my head. You ask me to name you like 10 great Randy Orton matches, bro, I can't give you one. I honestly can't give you one. Now, it's not to say that Randy Orton is not a great wrestler. I think that he is. But Ra Kenny Omega is a way more dynamic and versatile wrestler. The way I know that is that I could watch like five different Kenny Omega matches and have some different takeaways from what the story was or what exactly he was trying to do in the match. Kenny Omega is way more endurance. He has a lot more moves to his name and he is able to convey a lot more things than Randy Orton can. Randy Orton, yes, I think as a base wrestler, I think he's great. I'm not saying that none of his moves make sense. I'm not saying that in a way he can have a you know a really good match he's not capable of having a great or five star match but name me a five star randy Orton match because they don't exist <laughs> i mean that would be like me asking you about your favorite actor and you saying leonardo dicaprio and then when i ask you to list me five great leonardo dicaprio movies you can't give me an answer or like why is joaquin phoenix's joker better than he fledger's joker and you're like oh because he has a better laugh but it's like okay he has the better laugh but who won the more Oscars? Who won more Academy Awards? Who has the better acting skills? Keith Ledger. So let's just say that we're going by statistics, right? Kenny Omega has how many five-star matches to his name? How many uh, nine over nine overall rated cage match matches in his name? How many championships to his name versus Randy Orton? Randy Orton might have more championships. But when we're talking about opinion-based facts... You gotta go off of what the fans think. And I bet you many fans will argue that Kenny Omega has better matches than Randy Orton. And if you have better matches than another person, you might as well be a better wrestler. Randy Orton is not a spot fest kind of wrestler. No. Kenny Omega is not a spot fest wrestler. Has he done spot fest matches? Yes. Is he a spot fest wrestler overall? No. Dumb argument. Oh, his matches consist of actual wrestling moves with logical reasonings behind it and it leads to some of the best wrestling that fans do not appreciate. I prefer his matches over a spot fest where Kenny Omega just hits a dozen V triggers and other random moves that look very choreographed and remind me of gymnastics. I am entirely convinced that he has not watched any Kenny Omega matches after 2012 because the matches he's describing Kenny Omega having sounds like his matches from DDT. I have not seen a spot fest Kenny Omega match in new japan now do they exist um yeah they, they probably do as a junior heavyweight i'm sure he's had his fair share of spot fest matches none of his okada matches were spot fest in my opinion none of his naito matches spot fest in my opinion none of the matches i remember him having on AEW, except for the tag team matches he had with like chris jericho were spot fest i don't know uh, he 
So, number three, better promo. I don't think this one needs... You know what? I'm not even gonna listen to his point. I agree with him entirely. Randy Orton is a better promo cutter than Kenny Omega. Next. Number four, the better legacy. Randy Orton is 41 years old and Kenny Omega is only four years younger at 37. Both of them started wrestling in the year of 2001. With that being said, it is clear that Randy Orton has the better legacy between the two. Randy Orton's biggest advantage is the fact that he's been a top star for the largest wrestling promotion of all time. Not too many people have been able to achieve this. Other than that, Randy Orton is also a 14-time world champion. That is quite the accomplishment, and not too many people have come close to this either. I think you could definitely make an argument for Kenny, uh, Randy Orton having a better legacy than Kenny Omega at the present time. Because Randy Orton has been on top way longer than Kenny Omega has. But considering that Kenny Omega started getting pushed in like 2004 and like from then on was seen as a top guy, multi-time WWE champion, multi-time world heavyweight champion, where Kenny Omega really didn't win his first major world title until like, what, 2018? I think it's a bit of an unfair advantage that Randy Orton has because he got pushed very, very early on. I think it would, it would be more fair if we're talking about like a certain year on, but if we're talking about from debut to Right now, yes, Randy Orton has the better career. I really don't know how else you want me to explain. I think this is a very unfair playing field with this one. But yes, I'll give him the edge on Randy Orton with this one. Randy Orton is a master of storytelling. How? There's been so many legendary feuds that he's had in the past 20 years, and I will proceed to name some of his best. The Legend Killer storyline in 2005 was easily my favorite work by him. Randy Orton running around as a cocky young star destroying old legends was great stuff. Another amazing storyline is the feud with Triple H. The man punted Vince. Orton is even making RK Bro work and the best thing about Raw. That is something that does not seem like it should work either, but it's Orton and he can make anything good. I'm well aware of the fact that people love Kenny Omega's Golden Lover storyline and the Okada one, but none of those really touch Randy Orton's legendary and iconic WWE feuds. Okay, so... Yes... And no, if you want to say that Randy Orton has had better stories, more compelling stories, more interesting stories over his career, 100% I agree with you. He has. I will not ever doubt that Randy Orton is one of the best characters in professional wrestling and may go down as one of the best in history. However, when we're comparing it to Kenny Omega, who spent a lot of his wrestling career in Japan, where their way of storytelling is far different than how we tell stories here in North America. Once again, we're going from a very, very, very different playing field. Ran Uren will go out there and he will cut a promo. He will go face to face with certain wrestlers that really build up to these main events and he will go and he'll attack certain friends and fan members and all that kind of stuff. That is Randy Uren's character. But when you talk about the way that Kenny Omega tells his stories in Japan, guess what? His feud with Okada, they were based off of the matches. The matches were great. And when Kenny Omega would come out, he would either challenge Okada and then he would let the wrestling do the work. And that's how most feuds in Japan go. Storytelling in these two countries are not the same. Culturally, they do not link up. And I think once again, this is just a very case of you are American. You are very used to American storytelling. So the American storytelling is going to resonate with you a lot more and it's going to be more comfortable for you. And you're probably going to like it more. And that is fine. But let's not sit here and pretend like Kenny Omega has had the opportunity to have those stories. Yes, he's had those in AEW. AEW's only been around for two years as opposed to Randy Orton who's been in WWE for 20. Unfair playing field once again. Number six, he sells. This is going to be the dumbest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> a lost art in professional wrestling is the ability to sell. So many people are forgetting about the basic fundamentals of making wrestling look real, and you can't say that about Randy Orton. He always sells every move. Kenny Omega, on the other hand, does not sell too well. I'm going to go ahead and throw a bunch of clips of Kenny Omega not really selling moves from New Japan to make my point, because the more you think about it, the more this looks extremely fake. Oh, this motherfucker about to get copyright strike. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestle Kingdom? Wait, and New Japan? He about to get copyright strike, bro. Somebody send this man some help. New Japan, it just looks... 
reply to my DMs are open if you need help getting those copyright strikes moved, bro. <laughs> but no, that was so stupid. Kenny Omega does watch his matches with Okada. Like, okay, I will give you this. There are periods in time where a lot of wrestlers will forget to sell. Or maybe they're very into a very, uh, you know, a sequence and they won't sell. And guess what? A lot of the times, a lot of things you're referring to is the Japanese culture. I bet you, you're probably like Tomohiro Ishii matches too, where he knows sell certain moves. Do you like Goto matches? Do you like a lot of Okada matches? Guess what? They do the exact same fucking thing. Once again, it, <sighs> this is such an American mindset, which is fine to have, but don't come to the table and then pretend like Kenny Omega has been doing the same thing for years because they just haven't. Seven, he is more serious. This has become a reoccurring theme on my channel because as we know, seriousness is important for professional wrestling. For the most part, Randy Orton has taken himself very seriously over the last two decades. He has not done anything that's way too goofy or out of range. Always serious is Randy Orton, though. <laughs> it's a different story, though, when you look at Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega wrestled a nine-year-old girl, an inflatable doll, and Marco stunts. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, just say you don't have fun to end the video already. Jesus fucking Christ. Number eight, a bigger draw. Drawing crowds and- This is like literally the worst point people bring up. Oh, who's the bigger draw? And then they bring up their opinion about why they're the bigger draw instead of the facts. Also, I don't even need to hear this because Randy Orton was featured in the biggest pro wrestling company in the world for 20 years. Whereas Kenny Omega was featured in the biggest Japanese company in the world for about what? You could even say safe bet maybe seven or eight years. And once again, North American company. Broadcast to millions of people at a time. Japanese company. Broadcast to maybe, maybe a million, maybe a little over that. Then you come to AEW, and the ratings are what? 700, 800,000, 1 million every once in a while. Me and my Randy Orton on Raw and SmackDown, still over 1 million. It is an unfair advantage once again. Like, this is so fucking stupid. Randy Orton is obviously the much bigger draw between the two. Like, fucking duh. What do you want me to say? Number nine, less leg slapping. When I think he, I, I think, I, I don't even, his points fucking suck. When Kenny Omega does the V trigger, something that always bothered me is the fact that he's always slapping his legs. If you watch my previous RIP leg slapping video, you should be well aware that I'm not a fan of slapping legs. I could fucking tell. Would you would you rather them just knee people in the goddamn face for real and possibly concuss them and make an, just to get an authentic sound? Or would you rather them knee them in the face, miss, and then they pretend to sell. What do you want? Pick a fucking struggle. Because the way to avoid both of those incidents is to do a leg slap and grace them. Or hit him and do the leg slap. Like, stop trying to fucking find shit, bro. In a real fight, you would never see someone slapping their leg for a sound effect. Also, why are you so heavily focused on the leg slapping? Literally, I watch matches all the time, and that does not bother me at all. Like, literally just watch the match, bro. Number 10, he can throw a punch. And the last reason on the list why Randy Orton is better than Kenny Omega is the fact that he can throw a punch. This is a problem that not just Kenny Omega has, but a lot of Omega is a... Motherfucker, these punches look fake. What are you talking about? Slow it down. Slow, slow this shit down. These punches don't even look real. Like, 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 newsflash for you. A lot of wrestlers, they'll throw real punches. Hold on. Look at this. Hold on. Look at this punch he just threw at him. Hold on. Give it a second. Look at this. He bends his hand back. Oh, oh, that was such a real punch. This is how I punch. <sighs> That's how I punch, bro. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, I punch with my wrist. <laughs> This is what all wrestlers do, bro. Do you want him to start socking niggas? Like, I don't understand. 
these are some of the most blank statements I heard. I swear to God. Okay, so Puana Productions, I I have to understand that he does not watch a lot of Japanese wrestling or wrestling from many other companies. That is blatantly apparent to me. However, I think that if you are not very knowledgeable in another topic, you should not be talking about it. It is very clear to me that he does he pinpoints a lot of things and is very nitpicky it does seem very skewed in one way and not more so trying to very much understand the aw new japan route of how kenny omega does his moves how he tells his stories i will summarize his video in one word the immortal words of one of the greatest rappers of all time stupid <laughs>